you have mentioned, and if I'm strawmanning you here, kick my ass, tell me I'm strawmanning you, and tell me what your position is, and, and I, and I apologise profusely. You've expressed the position that the police are essentially the biggest group of gangsters out there, that the only way of defending your liberty and your democracy is to have um, an assault rifle, and that in order to express your amendment rights that you are granted or which are recognised, you must own an assault rifle. I think probably before I begin, I need to establish some credibility. This is, and I point out, these are snap caps, not, uh, not, uh, not actual live ones. But this is a uh, quite an interesting shotgun, actually, double barrel, side by side. Clearly, uh, still works perfectly. He says confidently. Um, barrel is uh, what they call Damascus barreling. I don't know if you can see that. It's uh, it's got a mottle effect, like a turtle shell. Stock part is a Bosch single trigger mechanism. They were made. The barrels by a company called Leach and Son, and as I say, the, the mechanism by Bosch. Um, and the two were put together sometime around 1920. This is a 410 caliber, again, shotgun. Uh, this was probably made in the 1940s. Honestly, you can't kill anything with this, which I'll come back to in a minute. But I mean, just if you look at the size of this barrel, you see that hole down there? That is about the size of a pea. This, uh, by contrast, is um, my pride and joy. This is a Beretta 12 ball. Um, it's again single triggered, over and under um, shotgun. It's a, what you guys probably call a skeet gun uh, originally. Again, I point out these are snap caps, these are not actual real bullets, uh, shells. Um, it's a beautiful gun. It's absolutely amazingly constructed. It's great fun to shoot. Um, I use it to shoot pheasants and I use it to shoot clays. Okay, gun porn over. Okay, let me just assert the UK position because this is really misconstrued. We do have tight gun, gun controls in the UK. Those shotguns I just showed you, the government has to prove that there's a reason that I shouldn't have them. And the reasons are pretty specific. If I have a severe mental disorder which the state believes uh, that I do not have the right to operate anything in my life, i.e. I have no power of attorney over my own life. In that circumstances, I am not allowed to own a shotgun. If I have a criminal record which is current, i.e. less than five years old, then I'm not allowed to own a shotgun. But I am allowed to own one if that criminal record has expired. Other than that, there's nothing they can do to stop me. They can give me advice about the way that that gun should be held and owned, and they do. They come round to my house and they inspect my gun cabinet on a... Uh, a five yearly basis or whatever it is, I think it's seven years actually, and they say that license, uh, sorry, that, that cabinet is good or bad or you should do this, you should do the other. Bottom line though, they have to issue the permit. If you want to own a rifle in this country, you can have any kind of rifle that you want. The rules are very simple though, you can't have an automatic rifle. But these can reasonably be justified as things that one might use to shoot rabbits or deer with. You can go out and buy yourself a bloody great big sniper's rifle with a huge great big telescopic sight which could reasonably kill a target at five miles away, provided that you can prove that you've got use for it, and that means game control. Or it means sport and you're a member of a gun club, in which case, again, you're issued a license. It's really not that draconian, but it is sensible. There's a line which the government says you shouldn't cross, and that is owning a fully automatic rifle, because that does have only one purpose. The reason that I have those guns is primarily to kill things. A gun has only one purpose, and that is to kill. And generally speaking, guns are designed to kill specific targets. That gun that you have, I'm pleased that you have it and that you take some pleasure in owning it, but don't kid yourself that it's designed to do anything other than kill people. And it's kill people. It's not kill deer or kill rabbits or anything which could reasonably can be construed as food or even just game. That gun is designed to kill other human beings, to end their lives. So the question is, why should you be allowed to own one? You're saying, at some point in my life, I believe it will become necessary for me to take the life of a fellow human being. That's essentially preemptive murder. Now, I know that I'm taking that to an extreme, but there is a reality in there, which is that you are owning that rifle in the dead 
cold assumption that you will at some stage use it on another human being. And I guess what I'm interested in here is at what point do you think that line has been crossed? I mean, have you ever shot at anybody? I mean, I know some of your history, and I won't go into it here because you've mentioned it before, but you probably know people or have come into contact with people who have taken another human being's life. Now, the biggest thing I've ever shot is a deer. And I don't want to do it again. That was no fun. I enjoyed the stalking. For me, it took about eight and a half hours of really hard work to get into a position to take a shot. It was a necessary thing to do on the side of a hill in Scotland where the deer population had got too big. And I shot the deer. And I killed it cleanly. And I was very pleased that I killed it cleanly. But if you'd asked me at that moment to take the sights off the deer and shoot another human being, I don't believe that I could do that except in a fit of anger, and that would be an irrational decision. So I don't believe, and I suspect that you're the same, that I could actually kill somebody except in passion. So why give the population the opportunity to kill one another with fully automatic weapons? Because that's all you're really given the opportunity to do. If all they're going to, the only time they're going to do that is in the moment of passion and therefore be irrational about it. It won't be because they passed Patriot 3, which has deprived you of any privacy and has put a CCTV camera in your bedroom so that they can watch you and your girlfriend humping of an evening. It's going to be because somebody's broken into your house and you feel threatened and you're going to blow the head off, or because you are somewhere that you feel very uncomfortable with, you're going to pull the gun out and you're going to fire it, or because somebody's really pissed you off on... YouTube, and you track them down and shoot them. Now, I, I don't genuinely believe you're going to do that. I do not believe there is ever a set of circumstances in which I would genuinely take armed action against the state, mainly because I'd lose, and lose horrifically. We are so far beyond the point where it is reasonable to have any kind of armed insurgents in this country, or any country which is remotely developed, that it's pointless to think about it. The police aren't the biggest gang out there. They're the gang that you've put there. At the end of the day, your tax dollar and your votes ensure that they are upholding rules that you have decided to allow according to the democratic process, be they local laws about parking permits right through to the really big shit like assault rifles. You have at every step had an opportunity to cast your vote, to influence your senator or congressman or the president himself, and get a set of laws enacted or retracted. Now, I'll grant you, democracy has a tyranny to it. I mean, you've only got to look at the last eight years of George Bush and you can see this didn't go so well. And you could be very frustrated in a society where perhaps the laws that are getting passed are not the ones that you want. But is there a point at which you pull the rifles out? I, I don't think there is, because if there is, you should already have pulled the gun out. And this is a very cynical view on the one hand, but I think it's entirely realistic. Did you consider walking down the street and taking to an armed insurgency when Guantanamo Bay opened? Probably not. You probably should have done. What about when the Patriot Act itself and then the Patriot II Act was passed? Did either of those cause you to think, now's the time to reach for the rifle? Probably not. Because you would have done if you were ever going to do it. I think you've got to consider owning them a monstrosity. Not because I don't like people that like guns. Liking guns is fine. If you want to own that gun, I think you should be allowed to own it, but you should own it in a gun club. And you should shoot at targets down the range and pop it back in the locker when you're finished. Because you have no need for that at home. You do not need a rifle that can fire at whatever it is 100, 150 rounds a minute with a lethal range of about two and a half miles in your closet for the time that a burglar comes through your front door. I'm sorry, I just don't buy it.